Thanks for watching Lessons in Minutes with J. Lee. Like, share, and don't forget to subscribe. For this session, we're going to continue to look at the balance sheet. At the end of the lesson, you should be able to demonstrate how to prepare a vertical balance sheet from a list of balances in the order of permanence. Now, if you have missed the previous lesson, which was on the horizontal format, the link is in the description below. And please note, I'm just looking at the simple preparation of a balance sheet, simple, simple balance sheet. In another session, we will look at the more complex balance sheet where more knowledge is required in order to complete that balance sheet. Now, let's review the format. And the format of the vertical balance sheet is that it represents the accounting equation, assets minus liabilities equal to capital. I must point out that when you're doing the vertical balance sheet, there is a concept that you will be introduced to, and that is the working capital. And I know you're wondering, what is working capital? The working capital people is the current assets, total of current assets minus total current liabilities. But what is the aim of working capital? Working capital basically indicates the or give the business some idea of the funds available to run the business on a day-to-day -day basis. So the working capital give the business the idea, the owner of the business. It tells them the amount of money that is available to run the day-to-day -day activities of the business. Now tell you what, the working capital can either be positive or negative. It can be positive or negative. But if it is negative, note basically that there is not anything, there is no money available for the business to run its day-to-day -day activities. So therefore, it has to seek money from elsewhere, put plans in place to get enough so that it can run the day-to-day -day activities. Working capital, capital is also referred to as net current asset. If the figure is negative, it is referred to as net current liabilities. But if it is positive, it is net current assets. We're not saying that when you work the question and if you get a negative figure, you can't refer to it as net current asset. All you have to do is to represent that in brackets and that would give you, indicate that the figure is negative. So if you don't remember, that a negative value is referred to as net current liabilities. Of course, you can use working capital. You can use net current asset, but basically you have to put the amount in bracket. Now, the question that, had you, that was used in the horizontal format is the very same question that I'll be using today. And let us get into that question. So from the following, draw up the balance sheet for N Brown as at October 31st, 2020. And again, you have cash, premises, stock. Of course, those are assets. Bank loan is a liability, mortgage liability, motor vehicle asset. Creditors is a liability, bank asset, machinery asset, debtors asset as well, furniture. Of course, yes, asset. And we have capital, we have the value for capital. So in this case, there's no need for you to ascertain the capital because it is already calculated for you. In doing the balance sheet, again, we're doing the classified balance sheet. So it means that you have to categorize the items in terms of fixed asset, current assets, current liabilities, long-term liabilities. The first thing that you'll do when you prepare the balance sheet, when you're preparing the balance sheet, is to enter your title. And the title read N Brown balance sheet as at 31st of October 2020. So you have to indicate the period in which you're preparing it for. And we begin with fixed assets because remember, we are preparing the vertical format and it is assets minus liabilities equal to capital. So therefore, we begin with our most permanent category of the asset, which is the fixed asset. In terms of the fixed asset, let us identify those fixed assets. 
And here we go, we have premises, we have motor vehicle, we have machinery, as well as furniture. And let us look at the preparation of that in the balance sheet, how you represent that in the vertical balance sheet. Again, the items are listed in order of permanence. So we begin with premises and the people remember to ensure that you put the value directly in that same row as the item that it represents. The machinery, furniture, followed by motor vehicle, which is the least permanent fixed asset that we have right here. Now, having listed the fixed assets, your next step is to total those. And the total is 101,930. Now I must point out that the vertical balance sheet, everything runs down. Okay, it's a vertical flow running downwards. And you are seeing four columns. One is used for the, to list the items. And there are three monetary columns, amount columns. The one to your far right is used as your main column. If it is that you need to calculate a total to put into the main column and you have more than one item to get that done, then of course you're gonna use the middle column. And then when you get the value, then you can always transfer to the main column. But there may be a case where you might need to calculate something to be used in the middle column and that would have to be done in the first monetary column, the first amount column. Now back to entering the items in the balance sheet. So again, once you list the fixed assets, you're gonna total those. And the total is 1,930. Our next step is to pick up our current assets. So we're gonna look at the question and pick up our current assets. And our first current asset that we're seeing is cash. We have stock, we have uh, bank, we have debtors, all right? And uh, let's look at the balance sheet, that section, the current asset section, and here we have them. And remember people that we're looking at the order of permanence and the correct order is stock is listed first. Remember to put in the value as you go along, debtors, bank followed by cash and after you're finished listing them then of course again you have to total so we're seeing that our total current asset is fourteen thousand two hundred and thirty dollars now we are going to look at the other section of the balance sheet and what is required from us our next step is the less current liabilities. So to backtrack, the first thing that you list, first set of items that you list are your fixed assets. Once you put in an item, put in the amount. Once you have entered all your fixed assets, then you're going to total. Your next step is to enter your current assets. And notice the column that we pick up the current assets in, the middle column, because yes, we have to do some calculation. So after you have listed your current assets, you total those. Then your next step is to list your current liabilities because guess what? We're heading towards calculating our working capital. So we have to list our current liabilities and then we're gonna subtract that from our current assets. And yes, that will give us our working capital. Now let us pick up our current liabilities. We have creditors, we have full. So based on what I'm seeing right here, creditors is the only current liability. And let's look at that in the balance sheet. Now, because creditors is the only, the one and only current liability in this question, we put that value in the same column as the current asset. If there were more than one current liabilities, the amounts would be listed in the first column right here. And then 
the total would then be transferred to the middle column below your current assets because yes you need that total to subtract from your current assets and once you have your total current liability then we can now determine our working capital and that is the 14,230 which is our total current assets minus our total current liabilities and that gives us 11,500 now what do we do with this figure this working capital figure is added to your fixed assets. So we add that to the fixed asset. In this case, the figure is positive. If the figure was negative, working with integers, if you are adding a negative figure, what you need to do is to find the difference between the two figures and you keep the sign of the larger number. So, here we go, having added the 11,500 to the 101,930, you get a total of 113,430. We are now going to move into another aspect of the balance sheet, and that is to pick up our long-term liabilities. Remember, the vertical structure of the balance sheet is showing the accounting equation assets minus liabilities equal to capital. And so far, we have our fixed assets, we have our current assets, we have our current liabilities. So therefore, we are going to now pick up our long-term liabilities. And our long-term liabilities are bank loan and mortgage. So that is bank loan and mortgage all right now the bank loan is six five and the mortgage is twenty five thousand let us look at the treatment of that in the balance sheet so let us look at all that is recorded in the balance sheet we have more than one long-term liability so therefore we're using the middle column to do our calculation because we need a figure for the final column the main column and our total is thirty one thousand five hundred that is subtracted from the 113,430, and that gives us 81,930, and we can refer to that as our net assets. So just to review, the first part of the balance sheet, fixed asset, total those, list your current assets, total, then you subtract your current liabilities to get your working capital. The working capital figure is added to your total fixed assets to give you this first figure right here. Because there is long-term liability, we continue and we subtract the long-term liability from the figure that you got above, and that gave us the net assets of 81,930. Say, for example, there is no, there is no long-term liability. There is none. If there is no long-term liability, then this figure, this figure would become your net asset if there is no long-term liability. And trust me, there are questions without long-term liability. All right, so let us continue. Now that we have assets minus liabilities, we have that value. We now need to look at the final part. And that last part is the capital section which is referred to as our finance by section. Remember, we, this lesson is looking at a simple balance sheet. So all we have for that section is the capital and the capital is 81,930. So let us look at that. Finance by capital 81,930. And are we balanced people? Are we balanced? What do we use to determine if we are balanced? Now, this figure 81,930 represents assets minus liabilities. That's the value that you got. Is that equal to capital? Yes, it is because our capital is 81,930. Are we balanced? Yes. Okay, because our total assets minus total liabilities is equal to capital. So, therefore, we are balanced. Now, just before we go, let us quickly compare the 
horizontal format with the vertical format. So here we have the horizontal format that was prepared in our previous session. This is the horizontal. Notice the red lines give you the shape of a T. On the left, you have your assets. On the right, we have capital and liabilities. Remember, for this format, it shows the accounting equation assets is equal to capital plus liabilities. While for the other format, which is a vertical format, you see that it represents the accounting equation assets minus liabilities equal to capital. And this one is a vertical flow. Remember that flows downwards. And that takes us to the end of our lesson on preparing a balance sheet using the vertical format. Like, share, and don't forget to subscribe.